welcome to all for today's session on deep groove ball bearing selection from manufacturer's catalog hi professor prashant kushare welcomes you to this session on selection of deep groove ball bearing from manufacturer's catalog the learning objective of today's session explain after this session you will be able to explain basic procedure for the selection of a deep groove ball bearing from manufacturer's catalog this is the learning objective basic procedure for the selection of bearing from manufacturer's catalog in earlier sessions we have seen what do you mean by bearing different types of bearings or different types of rolling contact bearings their applications then life of bearing then l10 life then median life then load life relationship life in million revolution life in hours and today we are going to see how to select a bearing for particular application from manufacturer's catalog there are different steps involved the first of all here in while selecting the bearing that is deep groove ball bearing or single deep groove ball bearing the first step is calculate the radial and axial forces acting on the bearing you know very well based on the type of load which is acting on the bearing bearings classified as a radial load bearing and axial load bearing but before deciding it what we have to do we have to determine or calculate the radial and axial forces acting on the bearing then once you will get a, a radial and axial forces the next uh, important step in the selection of bearing from manufacturer's catalog is determine the shaft diameter because by using the shaft diameter we can easily calculate uh, the, the, we can easily select the bearing which are available in different catalogs of manufacturer bearing manufacturers now today i am referring vivi bandari's book and in this book escape catalog is referred and tables which are given in the book that we are going to refer while selecting the bearing based on the diameters the next step determine the diameter of the shaft and you know very well once you know the diameter you will get the proper designation also or from the bearing number you can take from the catalog and you will get the static load capacity and dynamic load capacity which will be required while selecting the bearing for particular application now take one of the best example here you will find this is one of the bearing here then gear and the pulley which is mounted on the shaft the pulley transverse or power or it are horizontally here gear which is shown gear is also if it's a spur gear subjected to two forces tangential and one other one is the radial force if it's a helical gear then it is subjected to radial axial and tangential force and that means the by base on these forces the, our target should be to find out the forces which are acting on it it will help us to give you the magnitude of radial and axial forces which will be required to find out the shaft diameter sometimes shaft diameter of the where the bearings are mounted may be given if it's not given then we have to determine the shaft diameter look at this diagram you will find at this in this case here you will find here shaft diameter is uh, low or you can say the lower than this uh, bearing or you can say the, the right side and bearing the first target to find out the shaft diameter based on this forces also and already you studied this how to design the shaft in design of machine element also the same approach or a semi code of shaft design you can use to find out the shaft diameter once you know the shaft diameter the we can easily select the bearing from the catalog and we have to check it whether it's suitable or not based on by following the different steps given in this basic procedure for the selection of bearing from manufacturer's catalog now we have step number 2 in step number 2 what we have to do once you know this diameter of the shaft 
the what we have to do we have to select the type of bearing for the given application from the catalog this is step number two i will elaborate that things but here look at this the in this view the same figure which is in frontal plane is a bearing one bearing two you will find bearing one mounted on this shaft having shaft diameter d1 and bearing 2 which is mounted on the shaft diameter having the uh, d2 diameter here gear and it's the pulley so you will find here two diameters the so once you know the d1 and d2 so what we have to do in the catalog or manufacturer's catalog for different diameters different bearings are given and you know very well the deep group ball bearing uh, designation the four to five bearings are available in the catalog out of that generally you have to select the light duty then medium duty then heavy duty in this way we have to check which bearing is suitable for particular application the next that is step number two is select the type of bearing for given application based on diameter of the shaft if diameters are given it's okay if not given you have to determine or calculate it this is step number two in step number t three which it's a very important step in the selection of bearing from manufacturer's catalog the first of all what we have to do the determine the values of radial and thrust factors from the catalog the x and y the nomenclatures are used for radial factor x and thrust that is y try to understand x and y means radial and y means thrust factors that we have to find out but how to find out these factors because you know in earlier sessions we have seen the equivalent dynamic load these factors are required and how to take these values from the table now for that purpose for single row deep group ball bearings the values of x and y factors are given or you can refer this table and this table is available in manufacturer's catalog also but before selecting it this value of x and y depends on the ratio of fa by co and fa by fr look at this in three column fa by co is the first column fa by fr less than e fa by fr greater than e that means that it depends upon two ratio fa by co and fa by fr the what we have to do once you have a sharp diameter suppose 20 the for that purpose you can select the bearing there are you know the light duty medium duty heavy duty likewise four to five bearings are available you can select it and from the, that 20 mm diameter you will get from the table that is co co is the static load capacity from the manufacturer's catalog you will get this value fa is the axial load once you know the I mean step number one already we have calculated the FA and FR that is radial load and axial load. Try to understand here. The so once you know the FA and FR, the so what we have to do, we have to directly find out the value of the ratio FA by FR. And the next step is to find out the FA by FR. Once you know the FA by C1 means static load. From the table, you will get catalog based on the shaft diameter, static load capacity, FA by C. What this ratio you have to find? Once you know that this ratio, suppose if this ratio is 0 0.025, that means you will you can select here for 0 0.025, the value of is 0 0.22. And if this 0 0.22, whether it is less or greater than FA by FR, that you have to check. If its FA by FR is greater than E, you can use this column and if it's a less or equal to e you have to use this column but if fa by fr is less or equal to e that means you will get always for different fa by co x is equal to one look at this and here y is equal to zero but if fa by fr is greater than e that time you have to take the value of x and y from this column but x value is constant for all the values of FA by CO that is 0 0.56 look at this if FA by CO is 0 0.04 it's also a 0 0.56 0 0.56 0 0.56 but only interesting thing is you have to take the thrust factor why it is going to decrease it is going to decrease from 2 to 1.8 1.6 or up to 1 try to understand that means when is a pay by fr is greater than one it's very important to take the value of y or a thrust factor x is equal to 0.56 try to understand 
But sometimes so, what is happening? If a pay by CO ratio comes in between this 0 0.02 to 0.04, that time you will get the value of E in the between 0 0.22 to 0 0.24. That time to take the value of this Y, you have to go for a interpolation. If this a pay by FR is greater than E, try to understand. That time you have to go for a interpolation. That means by referring this chart, you can easily take the values of x and y or sometimes by using interpolation you have to take the value of thrust factor y. Try to understand it's very interesting or important one. Then in step number 3 to find out the fa by c or co and fa by fr this is how to take the value of co for that purpose. Suppose the sharp diameter is 12 mm here in the table Again, CO value, static load capacity of the bearing is given for the single row deep grow ball bearing CO 695. So, FA by CO means you have, you have to use this value and bearing designation is this. This is for the light, you, you know very well, different bearings are available as per the already we have discussed this thing in during while explaining the designation of bearing. Try to understand. And where this nomenclature small d is the inner diameter of the bearing, capital D is the outer diameter of the bearing, B is the axial width of the bearing, CO is the static load capacity and C is the dynamic load capacity. Because here in while selecting the bearing, we have to find out the dynamic load capacity and whatever the dynamic load capacity given in the chart, we can compare it and based on that we are going to select these bearings. Try to understand. I have taken this chart from Vibandari's book. Then in step number 4, what we have to do? Once you know the X, once you know the Y, and once you know the FA and FR from step number 1, that is process. The next step is calculate the equivalent dynamic load. Equivalent dynamic load. And now here the, you will find one V, which is the another factor, which is uh, multiplying the X, FR. V is the race rotation factor. When inner race rotates, the value of V is equal to 1. And when outer race rotates, the value of V is equal to 1.2. That means whether the inner race rotates or outer race rotates. And you will find near about 90% or more than 90% application inner race rotates. But 1 or 2% uh, some of the application you will find outer race rotates. That time you have to take the value of V is equal to 1.2. To try to understand P is the equivalent dynamic load in case of you know the um, radial bearing when radial load is acting and in case of thrust bearing when thrust load is acting the equivalent dynamic load means the constant radial load in radial bearing and constant thrust load in thrust bearing if applied to the bearing would give the same life as the bearing will attain under the actual condition that is equivalent dynamic load that is p that we have to find out and x is equal to x v a power plus y a p and if inner race rotates v becomes 1 therefore equation becomes x a power plus y a p a and we have to substitute the value of this factor x and y a power a and a power from step number 1 you will get the p that is equivalent dynamic load and then next step number 5 so what we have to do here to use the load life relationship the dynamic load capacity that we have to determine for the expected bearing life. Here we have to make the decision about the expected bearing life. And you know very well how to select the bearing line. To select the proper size of the bearing, there is a need to specify expected life of the bearing. And in case of vehicles and atom wells, you know the speed of the rotation is varying. Therefore, life is expressed in terms of million or billion revolutions. But in some applications, speed of the rotation is relatively constant and their life is expressed in terms of hours of service. Try to understand. If life that we have to assume for in terms of hours of service or millions of revolution, if hours of service we can convert it into millions of revolution also. The first of all, we have to decide or we have to make a decision about expected bearing life. For that purpose, suppose atom boil car. The life which is in million revolution 50 for a trucks 100 for a trolley cars 500 railroad cars 1000 million revolution we can refer the chart for this uh, atom oil wheel applications but for other applications suppose lifting tackle hand tools household appliances 
the bearing life is 4000 to 8000 hours then machine used for 8 hours of service per day such as electric motor or gear drives we have to assume a life in 12000 to 20000 hours and 20 per uh, 24 hours per day or continuous operations pumps compressor and converters we have to assume 40000 to 60000 hours and base here we have to make the decision about the expected life and again if it's uh, in the hours uh, we can convert into million revolution l10 in million revolution so for that purpose 60 and into l10h upon 10 raised to 6 this equation we have to use to convert l10h means hours into l10 in million revolution 60 into n that is speed of rotation into l10 means life in hours you can substitute here suppose 4000 for this one application then you will get L10 in million revolution. This is step number 5. Make decision about expected life for that particular application. How much time we are going to use that appliance. Based on that we have to decide the life and accordingly we are going to assume it. And based on that we have to find out L10 in million revolution life of the bearing. Why L10? That means you know very well we have already discussed this thing. The 90% of the bearing can sustain first the failure or the fatigue failure of that group of the bearing. That means 10% of bearing may fail due to this uh, failure. That's why L10 life. That means 90% of the bearing are going to survive. Try to understand. This is about the step number 5. And last step in selection of bearing from manufacturer catalog that is calculate dynamic load capacity from the equation you know very well l10 is equal to c by p raised to small p where c is the dynamic load capacity of the bearing p is the equivalent dynamic load you know very well x v f a here we have seen x v f r plus y f a that is p equivalent dynamic load that we have to substitute c dynamic load l10 means million revolution life in million revolution you can substitute this value you can substitute p and this small p is equal to 3 fold wall bearing and is equal to 10 by 3 power roller bearing you have to substitute this if we are selecting ball bearing you can substitute 3 if we are selecting roller bearing substitute 10 by 3 you will get the value of c here and once you will get the C is the dynamic load capacity, what we have to do? We have to refer the chart again here. I am going to show. Suppose shaft diameter is 12. So you know the dynamic load capacity. If I am selecting 6201 bearing, so C is equal to 6890. And if for the same calculated here, determine value from this formula P into L10 raised to 1 by 3 for the ball bearing, if calculated value. Suppose it is there 6890. This calculated is less. So we can say 6210 bearing is suitable. Otherwise, we have to go for the another option that is 6301 is having dynamic load capacity 97500. Try to understand. In this way, we are going to select to check whether the required dynamic capacity for this available bearing. And if it is more than the dynamic load capacity of the bearing is available in the chart, then select the bearing for, for the next series. And if it's less, then repeat the procedure step number 3. Again, we have to go for step number 3. Step number 3 means here. Again, what we have to do? We have to go for from bearing from the lighter to the medium to the heavy duty. And one by one, we are going to check directly. Don't take heavy duty bearing. Otherwise, what will happen? Because of that, the cost of the size of the bearing is going to increase. It increases the cost of bearing and that system also. That's why I repeat the procedure step number D. This is about the selection of bearing from manufacturer's catalog. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have referred Vivendari's book, Design of Machine Element, 3rd edition, Megroil publication. If you have any query, please contact us at 9890-426679 or mail me at pbkushare at the Thank you. Thank you very much. This is about the selection of deep groove wall bearing from manufacturer's catalog. Thank you.